Hi there, it's Jeff and Cassandra from RV Parenting, and we're new to owning an RV, but we've rented them many, many times over the past, say, 13 years or so. And so this video is all about how did we decide to buy an RV? How do we decide what kind of RV to buy? Uh, we actually bought two and changed our <laughs> mind on one, but that's a different story. So let's get into it now. Uh, so our first RV trip, we actually were living in Dallas at the time, and this is back in 2007. We just had our first daughter, Astrid, and she'll be turning 14 in February. Um, and we wanted to take a camping trip, but I was a little weary about having a baby in a tent going up to Yellowstone. <laughs> I was like, that'd be great if it was just us, but I've got a four-month-old. Look, sweetie, know. there's a bear. <laughs> Yeah, so I suggested an RV, and Jeff was a little on the fence with it because he's very much a, tra a traditionalist when it comes to camping. You know, no, you camp in a tent. You have everything that you need there. And We will not stay at a KOA. We will not, and we did stay at a KOA, and he survived, and I think anyone can survive because camping in an RV is just, I feel like when you have children, it just enhances <laughs> the experience completely, for I sure. I was a purist at the time. <laughs> I've mended my way. Uh, so yeah, we went to we were in Dallas. We went to Yellowstone um, National Park, which was if we took a two week trip, right? I think it was two weeks. It was probably closer to three. Yeah, it was. We had a lot of fun. Uh, <laughs> we stopped um, in Santa Fe. We stopped in Colorado. We actually got stranded in Colorado, which is probably one of my favorite uh, terrifying experiences in my life. Um, I like to look at maps, and on our map it said take the scenic route, you know, go over Independence Pass. I'd never been to Colorado, so I didn't really know what to expect <laughs> in regards to mountains. I was from East Tennessee, and East Tennessee has the Smoky Mountains, and those are big, but, you know, they're not terrifying. Rocky Mountains are a totally different story, you know. They're snow-capped in July, and that should have been my first warning to not go up to Independence Pass because I'm terrified of heights. But that didn't stop us. And it didn't stop us when the signs were saying, don't go up if your RV is beyond 33 feet. And Jeff's like, don't worry, it's only 32 feet. I had feet. been on Independence Pass a few times, and it didn't bother me. But I, we were newly married, and I didn't know she was deathly afraid of heights either. <laughs> deathly afraid is an understatement. I thought at one point I was just going to throw myself at the RV. I was like, that's it. I don't need this stress of going up these tiny roads. Uh, needless to say, I survived. Uh, we all survived. Got on the other side of Independence Pass. Uh, stopped in Aspen, uh, kept on going, um, then we just literally, our RV shut down. The electricity, everything just stopped and we were on the side of the road. Right outside of Vail, Colorado. We, were, we weren't planning to stop in Vail, we were just on our way to Denver. And it, it is as if some magnetic storm had wiped out all manner of power and electricity on the RV. Nothing worked. Uh, so we were stranded in Vail for three days. We rented a Suburban, continued our trip to Yellowstone. After we left Yellowstone, we picked up our RV because it had been fixed by then and then headed back to Dallas. And mm -hmm. that was really our first excursion in an RV <laughs> and what started this mania of like one day this dream must come true. And despite that sounding bad, we actually loved the RV. We had a great time in it and we couldn't wait to rent another one, hopefully without the, uh, the, <laughs> the electrical problems that we encountered. So what do you think was your favorite RV trip that you've been on? Well, we've been on several. We've we've taken an RV to Tennessee. We've gone to Big Bend, which is one of my favorite national parks, uh, really one of my favorite spots, period. In a lot of ways, that first trip uh, when Astrid was a tiny baby was amazing because we were going to all these places that I had been to before, Santa Fe, different parts of Colorado, and then all the way up to Yellowstone, but I hadn't been there in years because I love going to those places and, and I've been there many times in my life, all of those places. And but, I hadn't been to any of them, so it was all very exciting for me. Um, but honestly, I have to say this most recent RV trip is probably my favorite. Uh, as you know, if you've seen any of our other videos, we recently bought our Numar Baystar RV, and we almost immediately set out on the road for a month after buying it. And of course, the 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 what the situation going on in 2020 is what enabled us to do that because I was working from home and our daughters were able to do school from home, quote unquote. <laughs> and so we headed out on the road for a month. We went west. We headed west, then we headed east. We headed south. We went to Disney World while we were out, and and. We learned a lot, and it wasn't always smooth sailing, trying to figure out how to live in an RV with five people for a month. But There were tears. There was one night I locked myself <laughs> in our bedroom, had a glass of wine, put on Dolly Parton. I was like, no one needs to speak to me right now. I'm going to watch Dolly Parton's life, and everything's going to be fine. 
So just definitely a month on the road was a bit harrowing. Dolly makes it better. <laughs> Dolly makes everything better. <laughs> but that really like solidified, okay, now we have a good idea of like, how do we make it work for a family of five in this RV? We do have some other videos too that talk about more specifically about how to make RVing work with kids. Both we've got a toddler and we've got some middle schoolers. So we've got a couple of videos on that subject just in case you want to check those out. But I do think this trip was, was just amazing. We went all over the place in our brand new RV, dealt with some technical issues with the RV and it's now in the shop getting those issues fixed, but uh, it was still my favorite trip, I think. So what trip are we doing next? The next course is for your birthday. <laughs> I'm not gonna say the number. I like how you saw you're like, mm. I was like yeah, I'm gonna shy away from the number. But for Cassandra's birthday, we're going back to Big Bend. We have taken an RV there one other time. I wanna say that was 2016, 15. I don't know, it's been a few years. Let's just leave it at that. And. Um, of course, in Big Bend, my favorite place is up in the Chisos Mountains, which is really the only real mountain range in Texas. And it's actually like the <clears> southern <throat> part of the Rocky Mountains. It's like a little bit of scattered mm -hmm. remnants of the Rocky Mountains. But you're not supposed to go up there in an RV of the size that we now own. When we rented one and went to Big Bend a few years ago, we rented a fairly small one. I believe it was like 29 feet or something. Yeah, it was, it was and we, were, we all slept in this tiny bed together, but it was the most <laughs> amazing trip. We had a fantastic time. So it'd be interesting to see um, if we even make it up there, because that is my favorite part of Big Bend, just the scenery and the hiking trails and some of the wildlife you see. But Big Bend is beautiful all over the place. And so that's coming up in March for spring break. Um, that's that's going to be an epic one, too. <laughs> We're looking forward to that one. I wish they still let you go into Mexico from the border crossing in Big Bend. I believe that is closed right now due to the current uh, corona situation. But, but fingers crossed. When we were there before, <laughs> the border crossing was open. You do have to show a passport, uh, but then you just take a little boat across the Rio Grande, and then you can ride donkeys into the nearby town of Boquillas. Uh, of course, back when I was much younger, I used to go there when there wasn't an official border crossing, and the town really hasn't changed that much, but it's an amazing trek only about a mile from the river on the Mexico side. Uh, I'm hoping we get to do that, but I'm betting we don't. Well, we'll make the best of it anyway. <laughs> we're really good at finding adventures, so. Yes. <laughs> uh, there were a lot of, I think, fears for me when we purchased the RV because it's, it's it was basically like getting a second mortgage for us because we did go with the Class A. Obviously, if you go with a trailer or a fifth wheel, your price is going to be a lot lower in the month, but we decided to go big or go home because we're <laughs> Texans. Uh, and, and I think our family needs two. Uh, but one of the things kind of quelled my... We need two RVs? We do need two RVs. One for us and one for the whole crew. <laughs> A fleet. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, when they're old enough to drive, maybe. Yeah. But I, I think what I was getting to is like, I was scared. Like, that's a huge purchase. So I was reading all these other people that had bought RVs who weren't going to travel full time, but wanted to be able to travel when they fell up to it or wanted to. And so they rent out their RVs and you can do that privately or you can go through an actual company who leases out other people's RVs. Kind of like Airbnb. I know that you can do that on Airbnb. And the last two times we rented an RV, we rented it from a company just like that. They were, I think they're called American Dream Vacations. And they, you know, if you own an RV, you park it there and they take care of the, the maintenance and the service. And then they have a calendar where they rent it out. And if you want to use your own RV, then you block out certain dates and you get a percentage of the rental income. So it is, if you're not using your RV on any regular basis, it is kind of a cool way to make a little bit of money. Or at least break even. And not have to pay to park it somewhere. Exactly. So there are definitely some benefits to that. But it is definitely like a second mortgage if you're taking out a loan. We don't normally take on debt. Uh, aside from our RV payment, we've been more or less debt free for a decade uh, after discovering Dave Ramsey many, many years ago. And so Who this we is, saw on an RV trip, actually. We <laughs> did see him on an RV trip. We got to meet him and take our picture with him, too. But we normally don't take on debt. We did for this reason, just because the timing was so perfect in the fall of 2020. You know, I was working from home. Our big girls were able to do school from home. Had we waited until we had able had saved up enough money to buy the RV, the situation would have shifted and changed and they wouldn't have been able to do school 
on the road like we did. And so it just wouldn't have worked out. So we, we kind of rolled the dice. We took out a mortgage essentially on the RV. Our plan though is to, is to pay it off within a year because aside from this YouTube channel, we also have several websites and another YouTube channel, all of which provide our family's income. And so our goal is actually to pay off the RV within a year and not the 20 years that's actually on the note. Yeah, so take any shortcuts that you can. We know that when we're paying off our RV, there are no penalties for paying extra on the principal. So definitely <laughs> read the fine print on that. And just, I think for us, it was deciding one night I looked at Jeff and I was like, I have a crazy idea, which is usually how our vacations start off. And like, they... And she said, <laughs> uses that phrase with some regularity, <laughs> just so you know. And, and I used to be like, it used to make me nervous, and now I'm like, okay, what is it? <laughs> What's your idea? Where are we going to go? What are we going to do? <laughs> and so, I mean, that works for us. You know, usually I'm, I come up with these crazy, insane ideas, and Jeff is such a doer that he just says, mm -hmm. all right, let's do it. And I think we decided, and within a month, we had refinanced our home and bought the RV. Mm -hmm. And we didn't refinance the home to pay for the RV. Uh, it just happened to coincide where interest rates had dropped significantly. And we were able to drop a whole point on our mortgage by doing the refinance. Everything literally just happened in perfect. We, we didn't plan it. We didn't start off at the year 2020 right. saying, let's buy an RV. I had also quit my job in the, during the time that we were buying the RV too, which is interesting. <laughs> but uh, I had always intended to quit once my online income got to a certain level and it reached that level at the end of August. So I had already made the decision to leave my day job and focus exclusively on blogging and YouTubing, uh, which is what we do now. And if you're interested in how I do that, I know that's not what this channel's about. If you're interested in that though, I'm gonna put a link to a video down in the description and at the end of this video. It's just a video where I kind of walk you through what I do, just in case you're interested. He makes it sound so easy. Like I literally jog, run, sprint, stumble, trying to figure out how he does this, but it is possible. There's, he's great at instructing. There's a lot of great things to say about having an RV. For us, we're getting ready to install the electrician, um, what is that called, the box? <laughs> This is why I don't We're talk getting about ready to install a 50 amp pedestal at our house so that when the RV is parked here at our house, we have a way to get power. In other words, we have an unofficial guest house. So mm -hmm. that's kind of the plus side too, if you have the ability to do that in your home, is you do get a guest house. You don't have to worry about when people come to visit being cramped or whatever. Even with our older kids, they want to have sleepovers. You can put the kids in the RV and they have their own little area. <laughs> it's it's just multi-purpose. It's mm -hmm. not just for traveling. It becomes an extension of your family if you will right and you can go anywhere at any time i feel like we're really lucky we live in central texas so it takes forever to leave the state of texas however <laughs> in our state we have beaches we have mountains we have plains we have hills so you get a lot of diversity where we live and it's great to be able to just wake up one day and say hey we have a three-day weekend coming up why don't we go you know let's mm -hmm. go camping for a little bit or a couple days or see some friends want to go out and do it it's just it's nice to be able to just get up and go whenever you want to and not have to think about well where's the tent where's the sleeping bags and where's all that stuff and is it need to be washed or cleaned or anything is it going to rain the whole time we're there yeah just it doesn't matter you can just kind of get and go so traveling with an rv gives you a lot of options well and even when we went to my mom's house a couple months ago you know, she does not have a big enough home to accommodate all of us. And it's an hour and a half drive each way. So, and she's older and gets tired quickly, especially with our three kids running around the house. So it's a lot of work to go there for just a couple of hours. We spend more time driving than we do at her house. So the last time we were like, well, why don't we bring the RV? She has a big driveway, thankfully. Why don't we just park the RV in her driveway We'll hang out with her when she gets tired of us. We'll go to the RV. We'll be able to see her the next morning, and then we can go back home again. And, and aside from hitting some low-hanging tree branches in the <laughs> driveway. And losing an antenna. <laughs> and losing an antenna. Uh, it worked great, aside from that. Aside from that. <laughs> so needless to say, there, there's so many options with buying an RV. I think deciding for us was the first time we took that trip to Yellowstone, we were driving back and looking at RV campgrounds deciding what we wanted in our own RV campground. We're like, one day we're going to have our own RV resort park and it's going to be amazing. I'll have a pool and a theater and a washroom. <laughs> yeah, we, we dreamed big. Or, we did. Yeah, we still do. And, and that was specifically, I think, we had that vision of having our own RV park or campground after staying at the Rancheros de Santa Fe. 
uh, outside of Santa Fe, New Mexico, which is a great RV park. And we do have a review video of that in case you've never been there and want to head that direction. It's definitely where you need to stay. Yeah, it's one of my favorite RV parks. It's off the historic Route 66. But again, we have a video for that. It tells you all about it. It's, it's great. But yeah, Santa Fe will do that to you. And in Mexico in general, will be like, here, plant some ideas. <laughs> Roll with it. Dream. But we knew even back in 2007 that we eventually wanted to own an RV. We just didn't know how to make it happen at that point in time. We were still heavily in debt and trying to work our way out of debt and adding the, the expense of an RV was not in the cards, but we were patient and, uh, you know, the opportunity took the presented right steps. Itself. And yeah, and the opportunity presented itself in 2020 when the world was going crazy and it seemed like the right time to do something like that. It seemed like it was a stable move for us. Like it gave us that sense of stability because yeah. we do love to travel. Jeff and I, that's a hobby of ours. Ask mm -hmm. us about football, we're going to be totally clueless. But if you want to talk about being on the road, we're all about <laughs> it. And I think that's why it also works for us. If you have this passion to be out there in the world, just do it. You know, Don't hold yourself back. Now, if only we could drive the RV into Costa Rica, that would be something. <sighs> we could. I just don't think I, I don't want think to. I want to. <laughs> anyway, you got anything else for us? I think that's it. All right. Well, if you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. And smash that subscribe button and the bell notification button too. We're releasing at least two videos a week right now. And we know there's going to be something we cover in a future video that you're going to want to know about. But with that, we'll see you in the next video. Bye.